Today, I'll be talking about my least favorite comic book movies. As you can tell, I'm a little more monotone than usual, and that's because I had to rewatch some of these movies, and it was a real f***ing chore. Yeah, my life is so hard. Alright, I'll stop babbling, and I'll just show you guys uh, my least favorite comic book movies. <laughs> At number 10, I have Spawn. Now, Spawn isn't a terrible movie. It's still bad, but it's not completely horrible. To be completely honest, the only reason this movie is on the list is because it's incredibly disappointing. Spawn is one of my favorite comic book characters, and they just butchered him like a dirty animal. I mean, there are some good things, like I really like the makeup, and the character designs are really good, except for a uh, shriveled up Trevor Noah looking turd devil. And by shit, I mean it literally. He looks like a fucking turd. Spawn is honestly a lot like The Walking Dead. Great practical effects, but, uh, horrible special effects. What I cannot understand till this day is why did they not go balls out in the action? If you're gonna have terrible characters in a plot, at least give me something fun to watch. You know, like Venom. And that movie was PG-13. Yet, it still felt more gruesome and violent than this bland movie. 4 out of 10. The only reason why this movie has any points is because of the practical effects. <laughs> Number 9, I have Daredevil. I honestly just feel terrible for Ben Affleck because it seems like he's been perfect casting choices for not one superhero, but two. Unfortunately, he's put into the hands of morons, so even his acting can't save the movie. Also, Michael Clark Duncan and Colin Farrell were great casting choices as well, and I think they realized the script was crap, so they just decided to just not care. I mean, Colin Farrell just decides to chew every scene he's in, it's probably the most enjoyable parts of the movie. So I'm not really complaining, but what I will complain about is the script. It is god-awful. I nearly puked when someone had a speaking role. Give Spawn some credit, at least the dialogue was tolerable. Daredevil also has some of the worst choreographed fight scenes I've ever seen. When Matt and Electric Nachos are fighting in the park, I was cringing the whole time. I mean, everyone just moves like a f***ing turtle in the fight scenes. It just looks awful. The Daredevil costume looks... Fine, I guess, but Jennifer Garner looks like a moron in that outfit. Also, she can't act for shit. But I think the worst thing about this movie is how edgy it wants to be. They, uh, they try to come up with all this, like, dark tone to symbolism, and it comes out like a deflating balloon. There's a uh, one scene with uh, the cameraman zooming into the Virgin Mary's eyes, and she's crying. And they hold that position there for like 10 seconds straight. Like, what is this supposed to symbolize for this stupid ass movie? That God's sad? Yeah, I'd be sad too if I knew this abomination was real. And I had taken part into the creation of this film. 4 out of 10. This movie made God cry. <laughs> Number 8, I have Black Panther. I was pretty sad to learn that the director of this film, Ryan Coogler, also directed Creed. And I like Creed, so damn it. Alright, I've already made like two full videos on this movie, so I'll keep it brief. Alright, some uh, positives about this movie. T'Challa is by far the strongest character in the film. The choreography is really good when there's actual people on the set. Some of the acting is good, and I like the costume designs. And the negatives. Any character who isn't named T'Challa is either bland or annoying. Terrible special effects. Killmonger's motives are all over the place. I don't like black people very much, and there were a lot of them in this movie. None of the jokes were funny, and the movie was just overall poorly executed. Which is a damn shame because I really wanted to like this film. If you guys want my full opinion, check out why I don't like black people because I'm racist. It's on my channel. 3.5 out of 10, not enough white people. <laughs> At number 7, I have Batman and Robin. Gonna be honest, I wasn't too surprised that this movie was terrible, because Joel Schumacher sucks. But what did surprise me was that Uma Thurman was in the movie. What the hell is she doing in this piece of shit? It was like seeing Ava Goda in Good Burger. I'm guessing these talented actors are in these type of movies because... they gotta eat? I'm guessing times are really tough. Somehow, Uma Thurman is really bad in this movie, but... Arnold Schwarzenegger is still the worst part. Which isn't really a shocker because he's a horrible actor himself. If I'm gonna be honest, I think George Clooney was the only one who gave a decent performance. And I honestly thought he was a pretty good Bruce Wayne. 
He's not a good Batman, but he's a good Bruce Wayne. So yeah, the only good thing in this movie is that uh, George Clooney delivers a decent performance for half a character. And yeah, the other characters suck. Robin is a whiny bitch, and Batgirl is boring. She's still better than Ruby Rose, though. Um, technically, they're not the same character, so you can't make that comparison. Nah, shut up. As corny as this movie was, I didn't think that they would actually go the route of Mr. Freeze wanting to freeze the entire world because he just suddenly turned super evil. I like Mr. Freeze in the comics, I like him in the TV show, I like him in the video games, and... They just completely diss his character in this movie. He goes from wanting to save his wife to, I want to kill everyone. This is one of the dumbest villains in any superhero movie I've ever seen. 3 out of 10. Not enough ice puns. At number 6, I have Superman, Quest for Peace. I was originally going to put Captain America 1990 on here instead of this movie, but that movie was just really funny because of how bad it was. Quest for Peace is just stupid. The third one was crap, but it wasn't... this. The characters, the plot, the effects, the effects. Oh jeez, like I usually give movies from like the 80s and 70s a pass because... The effects can be dated, obviously, but... How does the first movie, which is nine years older, have better effects than this movie? So, the plot revolves around Superman wanting to get rid of all the nukes on the planet, and <laughs> even countries like Iran, Saudi Arabia, North Korea, Russia, America... <laughs> they just get rid of their nukes with no struggle at all. Okay, I can believe a man flying around in spandex, but I'm not going to suspend my disbelief for countries like America, Russia, and Iran giving up their nukes, like, no problem. And then Superman throws the nukes into the sun, and this creates Nuclear Man. He even comes out of the sun uh, as a fetus, I don't know. And honestly, the rest of the movie is just these two fighting. And if you thought Daredevil's choreography was bad... <laughs> Three out of ten. Man of Steel doesn't look that bad right now. At number five, I have Steel. Who the f wanted a Steel movie? Better yet, who the f casted Shaquille O'Neal for Steel? God bless him, but he cannot act. You think this movie might be funny, but it's honestly just painful. The corny one-liners are just so out of place and obnoxious. It's not even fun. Part of the reason for this is because Steel is one of the most unimpressive superhero I've ever seen. He's literally a punchline in a joke in his own movie. All we see from him in his own movie is that he either loses or gets beat up. Yeah, more of that please. He even gets outshined by someone in a wheelchair. In fact, the woman in the wheelchair, whose name is Sparky, should have been the hero of this movie. She's got a backstory set up, she's way more interesting, and she actually wins fights. I feel like she'd be much more interesting than boring-ass Shaquille O'Neal running around in a rubbery metal suit. Or just give me Shaft saying corny one-liners the whole time. Yeah, Shaft is in this movie. And it really pains me seeing him bring himself to a new low. Oh yeah, and this movie has a side kid character. Because those always work so great in superhero movies. Let's get ready to rumble! Ugh. 2.5 out of 10. Not even Shaft could save this movie. <laughs> and number four, Catwoman. Hey, I have a question. Why are all the black people given shitty superhero movies? I mean, I haven't seen Blade, but I've heard only bad things about it. Yeah, this seems pretty unfair. Actually, there is one good superhero movie starring a black actor. But it is animated, so I don't know if that counts. Anyways, this movie's shit. Now, I could rant on this movie all day, talking about the horrible special effects, the horrible characters, the horrible acting, but I think the worst thing about this movie is that stupid-ass Catwoman costume. It's like the movie is embarrassed to be even a superhero movie. This is what they did in Dark Knight Rises. But Dark Knight Rises kind of had an excuse because the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy is more realistic and this movie is obviously going for a more comic book vibe. Instead of trying to create a decent costume, they just try to make her look sexy. And somehow Halle Berry in a sexy Catwoman costume doesn't save the movie. I mean, nothing about the Catwoman movie is competent. The editing is so god-awful. 
It's a lot like the 2003 Hulk movie where they try to make the editing look a little more comic booky, but it just backfires into their faces. And the music in this movie is on par with the music in the Batwoman trailer. You know the one. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Two point five out of ten. I don't even have a joke for this one. At number three, I have fans for stick. This movie is boring. I was nauseated about how bored I was. The plot is stupid as hell, so these guys hire high schoolers to work on some high-tech super experiment. We don't get to see them train or a montage of them training, we just see them doing boring shit either for themselves or the government. Once again, Doctor Doom is screwed up as a character again. There have been four Fantastic Four movies, and they screw it up every single time. Doctor Doom is a complex character and they make him into some mustache-twirling villain in every single one of these movies. The fight scenes are short and boring. First time viewing this movie, I fell asleep. Yet yeah, a superhero movie made me sleep, how does that even happen? And then when I woke up, I was pretty pissed off because now I had to rewind the movie and watch it all over again. And because of this film, we'll probably never get another Fantastic Four movie for a while because the audience is sick of seeing them, and I'm kind of sick of it as well. That's why it was crucial for this movie to work, and it did the complete opposite of that. I would carry on and talk about this movie, but honestly, it's such a forgettable movie, I can't recall most of the moments in this film. 2 out of 10, it made me sleep. <laughs> At number two, I have Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Wanna know what's worse than a boring superhero movie? A superhero movie with unlikable heroes. Everyone in this movie is a f asshole. Especially Invisible Girl, who was more concerned about her wedding than people losing their lives. Yeah, that's a real likable trait. And then you got Mr. Fantastic, who was egging her on by saying, You know what, all these disasters around the world might destroy the entire planet, but we got a wedding to do. Like, do these morons not understand that there might not be a wedding because the world is ending? How could a scientist be this stupid? Alright, let's talk about the Silver Surfer. I liked him a lot at first, but they just ruined his character at the end. I mean, this guy has helped slaughter multiple planets, but it took one woman to make him change his mind. And he only met this woman like five minutes ago. Yeah, okay. And the master of Silver Surfer is Galactus. That's right guys, Galactus made it on the big screen. Actually, if I'm gonna be more precise, it's actually Galactus's asshole. Yep, Galactus in this movie is a giant gaping black hole that sucks in planets. Probably the most disappointing thing I've ever seen in a superhero movie. I mean, his appearance alone could have saved the movie. I'm being dead serious. Having a Galactus in space would be worth this piece of shit movie. But nope, they could even give us that. 1.5 out of 10, I'm in physical pain. <laughs> At number one, I have Justice League. You know how I said Galactus not showing up was the most disappointing moment in any superhero movie? Or something like that? Well, this whole movie is the most disappointing thing to happen to any superhero movie. I mean, my god. Now, I know Batman vs Superman was bad, but Josh Whedon took over the project, and I thought, you know what, this guy made Avengers, so this movie could actually be good. But, as I was watching the movie, I realized that this movie should have been darker. Marvel's Avengers is more for older kids. It's not a bad movie by any means, it's a really good movie. But one of the reasons why it was a good movie is because the movie knew its demographic. Marvel's Avengers knew exactly what it was, and it gave us what we wanted. Now, Zack Schneider originally made this movie, and because of a tragedy that happened in his life, he had to step down. And then Josh Whedon took over, and he probably made it worse. I mean, compare the tones with this movie and Batman vs Superman, it's completely different. You know what, better yet, just look at Batman from both movies. They took away all the cool and good things from BVS and then just made this joke of a character in Justice League. Everything about this movie is wrong. The characters are either bland or obnoxious. F the Flash. The plot is all over the place. Gal Gadot's acting is horrendous. kal no! She makes Schwarzenegger look like Matthew McConaughey. The CGI. Oh my god. I thought Black Panther had bad effects. 
there's not one moment in this movie where I thought, hey, this looks real. I was never convinced at any point of the movie. Even the costumes look like shit. Just everything about this movie is straight up garbage. Are there any redeemable qualities about this movie? <laughs> oh yeah, where was I? Oh yeah. The action is trash. Not as bad as Daredevil, but still bad. But giving some leniency to Daredevil, it did come from the early 2000s. What's Justice League's excuse? Guys, I grew up on DC. I mean, I like Marvel, but I'll always have a nostalgic viewpoint on these superheroes. So seeing this movie flop so hard was pretty hard to watch. I do think they're getting their act back together because Aquaman and Shazam are pretty decent movies. So hopefully they have another chance to create a Justice League movie. Yippee, that was fun. And yeah, I'll kind of make a counter video to this one by making a favorite comic book ranking or some shit. <sighs> okay, bye.